friends. Welcome to Floss Tube and Variety Show number 112. Today is April 12th, 19, I mean, oh goodness, 2024. I'm Emily Williams in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Thanks so much for joining me today. I know I have a few new subscribers. A few folks have come over to watch from uh, that very kind and generous um, invitation by Sarah at Sarah's Stitchy Spot. Thanks, Sarah, and thanks any of you who are looking at this because she thought you might like it. I hope you do. And some are come over from Denise of Black Ribbon Stitcher. I think that's what it's called. Denise is just great. So energetic. And um, some are coming because you are anticipating the Queen City Sampler Guild event in the beginning of May, which I certainly am. And you read the newsletter at the beginning of March. That would be right, because there's another newsletter coming out soon, of which I will be the editor, and do not get your hopes up. It'll be a work in progress, but it will be um, functional and hopefully will become more as time goes on. Okay, anyway, welcome. And many of you are my old friends, my folks who watch regularly, and I appreciate you all very much. Uh, and thanks for the great comments on the galloping horse video and all the great, all the views that that one got was quite exciting to Cindy and me. We certainly have a lot of fun doing our sewing and quilt making and making those videos. So there'll be another one in, I'm going to guess, maybe beginning of June, something like that. We'll see. We'll see when we have, can get our calendars to agree and feel that we have made progress on various things. Anyway, today's video, floss tube means cross stitch and variety show means something else. So let's see what it turns out to be today. Well, you know, it's gonna be about the eclipse. So just get ready. First cross stitch though. I have been working on a Mighty Acorn by Blackbird Designs. This is from the book called Winds of, Winds of Autumn, which was released a few, maybe three years ago. And I love this uh, little sampler type picture thing. Um, this, what it says is Mighty Oaks from Little Acorns Grow. And to me, it seems like just a great little sentiment. And I did work on it this past weekend, being the first weekend of the month, that's Blackbird Designs Weekend Stitch Along, BBD, BBD Weekend, weekend Sal, sorry for the hoop marks. Um, mainly, the difference is that I put this bushy thing in over here. Now it goes up, maybe one more leaf on it, and then there's a flower. And I also put in an acorn down at the bottom, which, I mean, who cares? That's 20 stitches or something. Um, I took this with me on our trip to see the eclipse, which you'll hear about later in this video. And I did work on it, but only one night. We, as you can imagine, we were doing a lot of things and I didn't always get a ton of stitching in the evenings, even though the well, some of the hotel rooms were <laughs> okay for that. Um, I thought I might have a finish of this. A. Robson, uh, 1897. This was the project from the Great British Sampler Weekend last fall that Leslie and I attended in Swindon, UK, and I did not finish it. I did work on it. So I finished another couple, well, I finished the line that has the numbers on it, and I finished the band underneath that. I got more done on the following band, and I did a few letters somewhere else, and I didn't get a lot of time on it, again, traveling, but I did work on it. 
And I also realized it was crazy to think I could finish it. If I had been home, I probably could have finished it in the past two weeks since my last video, which was right before Easter. But here, I mean not here, this is home. Uh, on the road, no, lost. Um, this is from the Words of Wisdom box by Hands Across the Sea. I'm doing this on 46 count latte. And I, I really, I worked on this. I didn't take this with me because 46 count is just a bit too small for me to work on comfortably using my travel magnifying lamp situation. But I did get some more done. It's very close. It really is. This, I'm almost wanting to say, you can guarantee it will be a finish the next time I make a video, which should be next week. Now, that may be ambitious. But the main thing that I've been working on since the beginning of February, as you know, is Jane Boyer, 1834. And this is a unpublished as yet sampler. Uh, the antique is held in the um, collection of the Leroy Historical Society. And Jane Boyer, the little girl who stitched it, lived in Leroy. And Leslie and I, so Leslie lives in Leroy, and she and I um, are going to give a retreat in October. And within 10 days from now or so, the uh, registration will open for that. I think it's going to be a very interesting day. It's a chance to... Um, hear about the history of a place and a family in a particular time frame. And we have an actual sampler and you can walk to where she lived and this the retreat will be taking place in St. Mark's Church, which is where she went to church and where she played the organ later. And anyway, I don't wanna give away all the details, but I've been enjoying this. So what I worked on while I was gone I could not do the over one. Again, over one on 40 count with my travel lamp isn't possible. So I did some of that um, satin stitch inner border and I did all of the over two stitching on the alphabet and the whatever else is there. What is there? Oh, the lowercase alphabet and the uh, uppercase alf alphabet. So that is all done. So all of the over two stitching on the interior of the sampler, except for another red bow, which will be on the other side, is done. So I'm, all I have left on the over two stitching is the border and that last red bow. I'm pretty sure that that's right. Over one stitching, I have just a little bit left to finish that verse. And then I have the things that she put in the lower part of the cartouche and the cartouche border. Oh yes, and there's a very pretty little uh, over one flower, rose, pair of roses that goes up in here. So that is, um, so you can see that there's one more, uh, one more red over two there and then the border needs to be finished. That's all the over two. And then the satin stitch is one, th well, it's all one thread. It's all, this is DMC and Surfine for the over one on um, Vintage Country Mocha 40 count. I love this. You know, I'm so close to being done in a way. There's a lot of stitching still to go. I do wonder what I'll do. Oh, guess what? I have some ideas. So a couple of things. Um, so first of all, I think I mentioned last time that Leslie and I are going to the, it's now being called uh, Mrs. Parkman's 
School of Needlework in Swindon, England in 2025. And they just, uh, Nicola just released the project, the pre-event uh, project. And this is a sampler by a little girl who actually is in New York State. This is from New York State. And she was 13. She made a boatload of mistakes, including even putting some of the letters of the alphabet in the wrong order. Like here we have A, B, C, N, V. And there's, she uh, interleaved her different alphabet styles by putting, you know, two or three different versions of some of the letters next to each other. She, of course, misspelled things, which is not necessarily misspelling because back in 1825, this was finished, standardized spelling was not completely a fact. Um, but anyway, the point of this is to stitch the top half on one piece of linen, the bottom half on another piece of linen, and then use a felled seam to sew them together. So that is what we'll be doing. And I have done a felled seam on my sewing machine many times, but I haven't done it um, come on, Emily, words. I haven't done it by hand. But, I mean, why would I? In the 21st century, we don't do so seams by hand. Um, this is in three shades. It's in black, dark, dark navy, and a medium dark blue. And so that's how it's been charted. Um, it's been charted for DEMC and it's probably 103 in Soie d'Arger, but I'll probably do it in DMC. Now, the cool thing is I have some linen options. So, and I think it's fun to do it in two different, slightly different colors, uh, but they should be the same count. So, I think that will be fun. I'll probably do it on 36 or 40 count. And it's cross stitch and rice stitch. Now, I showed you this. I'm talking about this a lot today. The chart is only for people who are participating in that event. And we may not distribute the chart to other people, but we may show our progress on it. And so I plan to. Now, am I starting it right away? No, because I'm going to work on Jane Boyer. Okay, now I'm going to start talking about our trip. Um because the next cross-stitch related thing has to do with the trip. So my husband and I left on April 2nd and we drove to see our son and daughter-in-law and they had very recently lost one of their dogs, uh, died of epilepsy. And so it was kind of a subdued time with them, but you know we were so glad to see them and see their remaining dog and the chickens and all that stuff that we do when we're there. And we took a nice walk. In fact, I will put a um, little screenshot in that I took of our, from my phone, of the screen of my phone, of a, the GPS showing that we were standing on the North Carolina-Tennessee border, which is the border of their property. So it was fun. We took a little walk and it was very pleasant temperature. We sat out on the porch and enjoyed the view and the slightly wind breezy, a little bit more than breezy, not quite as much as windy uh, afternoon. And then we took them out to supper and made our way to um, Cookville, Tennessee. From there, we made our way to Little Rock, Arkansas, where we visited Shepherd's Needle, which is a cross-stitch store. Now, the only reason I knew really about Shepherd's Needle was because Jane Thompson that I've shown before that I'm working on was an exclusive through Homespun Needlework Facebook group that was offered through Shepherd's Needle and I bought it and have been working on it. So that put Shepherd's Needle on my radar. Now Shepherd's Needle is not local to me. Little Rock, Arkansas is maybe 800, 
600 miles from here. It's a, quite a ways, maybe, I don't know, it's quite a ways. Um, but anyway, uh, the, Anne, the proprietor, proprietor, was just as delightful as could be, um, very friendly. She kept the shop open for us because we couldn't make it on time. And let me tell you something. She specializes in uh, linens and Ada in cross-stitch fabric. And she has a very large range of threads as well. And patterns. You know, she does it all. But really, I have never seen so much linen. Now, I'm going to be going to Hobby House in October, so maybe I'll have seen as much linen by then. But I just enjoyed walking around and seeing some things that I hadn't seen, which everything I hadn't seen before because I don't have a local place. And because she had kept the shop open, I had sort of me mentally said to myself, well, Emily, you have to buy something. Of course, you can't have her keep the shop open and then say, wow, I'll just be a tourist and look. But I was eager to buy something. It was not hard to make myself buy something. So the first thing that I decided to buy, oh, I meant to take this out. So a small amount of crinkling was um, this chart. Well, it isn't the first thing I saw. I saw so many things. And it is true that if you um, see the model, you want to stitch something. Well, come, I actually didn't see the model of this. Uh, maybe I did. This is called Winter in Baltimore, and it's by Brenda Gervais. And it's um, a stitched design that goes around this oval box. And then there's a little pillow pin pillow that you can put in the box. And there's also instructions for how to make this uh, bottle brush Christmas tree type thing. Um, evergreen tree, I should say, because it isn't Christmas only. And it is stitched, it is charted and intended to be stitched on Mushroom Lugana 25 count over one. So I got the threads. I got the fabric, which Anne cut for me and serged. And I think that's going to be very pretty. Um, yeah. Sort of pink, almost peachy, salmon-y colors, which are not normally the direction that I go, but it was all right. I liked it a lot, and I wanted to get something, and this seemed good. So I also, and I'm not going to show you, I also bought one skein of blue um, silk of some kind. I can't remember if it's NPI or Soie d'Arger. And I bought a big piece of Russian tea cake, 36 count, because I decided that I'm going to do, um, I am going to do Harriet Salt, and I'm going to do it on that. So then what remains is for me to cut my piece, my big piece of Russian tea cake into the size that I need for Harriet Salt and zigzag along the edges and decide what thread or threads I'm gonna use. I'm inclined to use a variety of threads because, I don't know, what do you think? Um, Sarah is doing Mary 395 using ma one main thread and one other thread. But I'm thinking that if I do a variety of threads that are all red, so they're all in sort of the same direction of red, like not Chinese red plus a real um, Merlot type red, if I all choose one or the other direction and use a lot of reds, that would look all right, don't you think? I might do each alphabet entirely in its own red, and then if I'm going to change, change to different red for a different alphabet. I don't. I didn't get the pattern out to show you. Believe me, it's going to be some time before I start it, but I will start it this year. I now have decided. Anyway, that was Shepherd's Bush. We went from there to 
Texarkana and spent the night. And then from there, we went to Windstar World Casino. Windstar World Casino. And I didn't know what the world meant. I didn't know what that word, why that was in there. And I could, did not get a picture. Maybe I'll look for one of their advertising pictures online because I'm sure there must be one. But the outside of the vast building that is the casino and hotel uh, restaurant resort area looks like um, monuments from around the world. You know, there's the Colosseum from Rome. There's the Eiffel Tower from Paris and there's something from London and so forth. Um, that's what world refers to. And when you go into the casino, the sections of it are delineated by uh, things that look like monuments of the different areas. So you can enter the Vienna area, keep going, you enter the Rome area, you keep going, you enter the Paris area and so forth. And th this has to be that way because the thing is, was I told a half a mile long? It's enormous. And we were there on a Thursday and we purposefully chose Thursday because the Friday and Saturday before the eclipse felt like they would be crazy busy and that just seemed unwise to try to be in a casino in those circumstances. And I, we never couldn't sit down at a machine that we wanted and all. Oh. Now, when I say we, I mean I and the friends that we met there, um, I do not mean Byron because he is not a casino person. He believes that gambling and lotteries are attacks on people who are not good at math. So I believe that those things are entertainment I entertain myself nicely. So from there we went and we spent the night at a friend's house in Fort Worth. Um, one of the highlights was that the husband showed Byron his virtual reality setup, which I had wanted to give Byron for Christmas, but I knew Byron would want to do the research. So now that he has seen it, and I have seen it and used it a bit, I think there's one of those in our future, at least I hope so. Um, so there was that. Then we went to Arlington, Texas, and our hotel room was within sight of Globe Field, Globe Life Field, which is where the Rangers play. The Texas Rangers, the world champions from the World Series last fall, in which they beat the Houston Astros. And we went to a game in which the Rangers beat the Astros again. So that was very nice. Um, it was fun to be there. I haven't been to a, any kind of a baseball game since before COVID and a major league game in a long time, a long, long time, possibly 30 years. It could be. Um, we have the Durham Bulls nearby, which is uh, a AAA club related to maybe Tampa. It could be. We also toured the AT&T Stadium, which is where the Dallas Cowboys play. <laughs> Excuse me. So I could tell you a lot of facts that we learned, and we went from the very highest uh, level where you would climb a little bit farther up to get to the highest seats, which we didn't go all the way up there, to the lowest level where we visited locker rooms and walked down the tunnel and that sort of thing. Now, there was an event happening on the floor of the arena of the stadium, so we couldn't go out on the floor, i.e. the field, um, but it was still great. Um, so... It makes me really think that we should tour the practice facility of a big team like that sometime because the team wasn't there. So the reason to make take this tour was to understand the vast scope of the space. 
Um, I mean, there were a lot of superlatives about that space, but the story that we heard that I thought was interesting is it has more than 1,600 toilets. It seats about 100,000. And so there are toilets in the locker rooms and there are toilets in the public restrooms on all the levels and in the boxes, the private boxes, which we visited, luxury boxes, and we visited the press box. So there's, you know, bathrooms everywhere. And in order to be able to move into the stadium, there had to be proof that the toilets would work correctly, even if they were all flushed at once. Because at halftime, if you have 100,000 people, it's quite plausible that you could have a lot of the 1,600 toilets all flushed at once. So what they did, we were told, was they got uh, 1,600 volunteers. Each person was assigned a toilet. They stood next to the toilet. There was a synchronizing of watches throughout the stadium. And then at the exact stroke, at the exact same moment, everybody flushed their assigned toilet and it worked. All the toilets worked, therefore they could move in. So I just thought that was interesting. I mean, when I was uh, involved with the building project at our church, we added maybe 10 or 11 toilets, and we didn't do that kind of experiment. We just believed that they could all be flushed at once. Um, anyway, no, it was more than 11. It might've been 20 all together, two, two floors. Uh, anyway, so it was very interesting to do that. Then we drove to Gatesville, Texas, from which this shirt comes, uh, where we met our friends that we were gonna watch the eclipse with. And we had a great time hanging out with them and finding places. Now, my friend Judy is very good at finding places to eat, doing the research in advance. So we had dinner at one place. The next morning we had Oh, so we, we were, um, the next morning was April 8th, the day of the eclipse, and we were concerned that we would have trouble getting around. So we thought we'll just walk right across the street from our hotel to the McDonald's that was right there and get breakfast there. And we would plan to snack uh, throughout the morning and over the lunch hour. The totality was supposed to be at 1.36 or one thirty nine. And then after it was all over, we would uh, find a place to eat an early supper. And so when we went to McDonald's, we went there just at the right time because the huge crowds hadn't really started. It was very busy, but it wasn't slammed. And all of the people who were working had special shirts that said totality shift April 8th, 2024. So those were shirts presumably provided by um, McDonald's Corporation for people who had to work during the eclipse during the path or in the path. So I thought that was pretty cool. We saw such a lineup of cars at the drive-thru uh, later in the morning. Um, our hotel was just as charming as could be. The couple who owned it were very nice. Um, we just put our chairs out on a grassy area and Sun, sunny, grassy area, you know, we had sunscreen and hats and watched the eclipse. It was cloudy. We were worried. But most of the clouds were high clouds and we could see the sun through them with our eclipse glasses. So we could see almost all of it and just a few really moments of the hour and a half between when the moon's shadow began to come between us and the, sh and the sun and when totality happened. Just a few, maybe five minutes altogether could we not see. So that was just amazing. And then as totality was about to occur, the sky opened and we had this window of blue sky for about two of the four minutes and it was amazing. Let me just say, in 2026, there's gonna be a total eclipse of the sun in Iceland, visible from Iceland, also from Greenland, where there's no, there are no people, the part of Greenland where there are no, there's no inhabitants. 
and down in Spain and Egypt. So I've been beginning to talk up, let's go to Iceland. We could see an eclipse, we could see a volcano, we could see whatever all else is going on there. Um, I don't know, it's August 12th, I think 2026, or August 21st, it's somewhere in August 2026. Um, the next one that seems very promising that's crossing the United States, the whole of the United States from California to Florida, maybe, is in 2045. Now, I will be 21 years older then than I am now, if I live. So... If that happens, I think Colorado Springs is the place to be for that one. The to length of totality will be six minutes, maybe a few seconds longer. Six minutes is long. Um, anyway, the eclipse was amazing. What we could see was amazing. The air got cool, it got dark, the street lights came on, the birds quieted, all the things that you hear about in a total solar eclipse absolutely awesome in the correct, most appropriate use of that word. And if you've ever seen it at 100%, you know that it's different from the from 99%. It is like night and day, it really is. Um, so then from there, we drove, the next day we spent the night uh, we went out and saw a field of blue bonnets, and I'll stick a picture in. Um, we drove f east from Gatesville. We had a few routes open to us to get to Shreveport, Louisiana, which is where we were spending the night. And we chose to go the southern of the available routes to get there because there was a huge storm system. And we were worried that we would get caught up in it. And so we thought we'd go south. It would for the most part, be north of us, which was a good move. It was, for the most part, north of us. Even so, we had torrential rain most of the dri uh, drive that day. Um, in this little picture, or at some point along in here, I will have put a picture in, a, a screenshot. The blue dot is where we are driving, and you can see that we're in a, a orange and red zone of the storm. So we spent the night in Shreveport. We drove the next day to Oxford, Alabama, and which was about halfway between Shreveport and home. And we didn't have a ton of rain that day, but we saw flooding in the fields and ditches and the rivers were high. All the way along, we saw trees, big trees broken off about eight feet off the ground, above the ground you know, tipped over, um, other trees broken or fallen or trees uprooted. Um, we saw, and we heard about when we stopped various places, sections that had no power, uh, tornado, clear tornado damage, flooding, and we saw flooding, I mean, very high water. Uh, along the highway, the high water was mostly in fields and in the ditches, but I can imagine that other parts could have been flooded in towns and houses. Um, and then the next, the final day, yesterday, yesterday? Yes, I lose the track when we're on vacation. We drove from Oxford home, again, through uh, Georgia and really up until we got almost to South Carolina, or maybe it was even in South Carolina, still evidence of the storm and high high water. So we're very thankful that we got home without getting entangled with that um, and that we got home to find everything safe and sound here. And I would say all in all, we had a very good trip. Um, by the way, Gatesville, Texas, where we watched the eclipse, is the spur capital of Texas. We did not buy any spurs. We took a quick little census and discovered that we didn't own cowboy boots, so we didn't buy spurs. I'm sure we could have bought some cowboy boots though, but we didn't. 
And so then I, then we got home and today we were very busy with some post trip things and it is now evening when I'm making this video. You can, you can tell because you see a reflection of the back of my head in the window instead of uh, looking out on the little woods area next to me. So that is today's Floss Tube and Variety Show. It seems to me there was something else I was gonna say. Um, oh, well, just a couple of notes. I'm looking over at my computer because I have a, no a, uh, a note. Um, one thing is that I've mentioned to you before the volcano system erupting in Iceland. Well, it's erupting again. It's been erupting for possibly just over a month now. And I think that might be the fourth or fifth eruption of the year. And it's the longest one so far. And you can look on YouTube and uh, find information about it. It's quite fascinating to me. Um, and I said that we were going to go to... Um, Iceland in 2026. Yes, I said that. And the only other piece of news, because I know you all depend on me for this information to guide your weekend, which is that this is the round four of the Sudoku Grand Prix. So don't miss it. I will be doing it probably tomorrow sometime. Anyway, this has been a little bit longer than my usual video. Oh, and I wanted to show you this. My friend Ed made a little spool for me. Uh, he he can do a lot of things. He put this together with some various things. And so this is that band, the sampler on a band that I stitched in January. Whoops, and it isn't adhered yet. I haven't decided exactly how I'm gonna do it, but there it is. So the next time you see this, it will be somehow attached and uh, a ribbon or something on the other end of it to be able to keep it rolled up. But that's exciting that he, I mean, he's just made this. I like it. He's offered to make me another one, which I think, well, if I had another band this wide, I could do that. I could make another something. Um, this was uh, Martha Worsley. Uh, 1878 uh, sampler owned by somebody that we met at Great British Sampler Weekend. Uh, this was also released at market, I noticed. So if you wanted to, sit to stitch this, you can. You can get it from your local needle workshop. And it seems to me that in the pattern that is was released at market there was another a small a pin cushion or something also included in the pattern so anyway this was fun to do and now i have a spool so i just need to figure out how i'm going to make the two meet mary okay that is really enough emily it's time to be quiet time to be quiet thank you so much i hope you found things of interest um, I hope I will have remembered to stick pictures in and enjoy your stitching. I will be focusing on Jane Boyer and Lost. Those are my two big goals for the coming week in terms of cross stitch. And that's all. Many blessings to you, friends. <laughs>